home renovating used to be a grim necessity of life. Now, it's a hobby. A hot fad worth over $40 billion a year in Canada. As a result of this do-it-yourself mania, utterly horrific craftsmanship is being pawned off as acceptable. Everybody knows at least one bad builder. But who is Canada's worst handyman? We're going to find out. Canada's five worst handymen, as nominated by you, have been brought to this rehabilitation center where they have each been given a neglected one-bedroom apartment which they must totally renovate in just 12 days. Holy The apartment seemed big and empty and, and scary. When they're finished, four of the nominees will go home happy, but one will be nailed with the shameful title of Canada's worst handyman. Merle. A truck driver from Sucker Creek, Alberta, was nominated for the title by his constantly terrified wife, Shelly. My goal here is to prove to Shelly that I could do something. To prove that, Merle needs to place function and common sense above corner cutting and speed. <laughs> Merle and planning don't even go in the same sentence. Jeannie, a retired businesswoman, was nominated as Canada's worst handyman by her friend Lawrence. The Valley Instructions. Jeannie enjoys reading instructions. Cut off top corner of each end shingle at an angle. But she rarely understands them. Why do they make it so complicated? In Jeannie's life, handiwork was always someone else's job. Now she wants to remodel her home in Victoria, B.C., and she's naively insisting on doing all the upgrade work herself. She needs help. The next candidate is Keith, a performance artiste from downtown Toronto. Keith's lack of home improvement skills were pointed out to us by his friend, David. I don't know what tools are. Like, I don't know what these things do. Keith never cared about being handy in his younger days, but at age 40, he's got the renovation bug, and his apartment is getting the scars to prove it. If you make a mistake, you just fill it in with toothpaste. I just use the wrong toothpaste, that's all. Daryl was nominated as Canada's worst handyman by his less than supportive wife, Sarah. I think it looks stupid. Daryl comes from a long line of handymen. All the tools, see, I don't know any of these tools are in here. But this bench pressing bodyguard can't even tell when his drill is in reverse. I would just like to do a little bit more than change a light bulb. The final nominee for Canada's worst handyman is Barry, brought forward by his concerned neighbor, Scott. Most of the time, nothing turns out right, and I hurt myself. Coming from BC's Gulf Island, you'd expect Barry to be laid back, but he's pretty aggressive about defending his terrible craftsmanship. But your expectations are too high. Canada's worst handymen know they're bad or they wouldn't be here, but they think they're smarter than our experts. It's easier to trim this than that. No, I found it. Barry for whatever reason, decided not to listen at all to the professional. It sounds complicated in your way. He had no idea how to do anything. Shut up and stand there. And none of them think they could possibly be the worst. I'm not Canada's worst handyman. I am not Canada's worst handyman. It's not going to be me. <laughs> not definitely not me. Fear is a powerful motivator. Oh my God, Daryl, you're going to have so much trouble. We're hoping the impending threat of being named Canada's worst handyman will entice our nominees to do better work. You know, if I'm walking down the street and I'm, and I'm labeled, you know, worst handyman, there's going to be guffaws here and people snickering here and, and, and um, it's going to be quite embarrassing. By the time they each completely overhaul their gutted one-bedroom apartment, we will make sure these people know the difference between structural integrity and duct tape. And we will know which one is Canada's worst handyman. Each of the six episodes in this series will focus on revamping one particular area of these derelict apartments. This number two show is dedicated to the bathroom. The first challenge for today's episode could get ugly. The nominees for Canada's Worst Handyman will install a toilet, which also means, of course, they'll rip out a toilet. Before we even let them attempt this grim job, our pro contractor, Greg, is going to give them a lesson in the wonders and the simplicity of modern indoor plumbing. 
So today, we're going to do toilets. Greg House, our head building instructor, is an overworked general contractor. 25 years of professional carpentry, plumbing, and electrical work has made Greg gruff and unapologetic. I never got paid because I was a nice guy. I always got paid because I did good work. And that's all I'm expecting. Greg's colleague here at the Handyman Rehabilitation Center is Robin Lockhart, owner of a Toronto-based design firm. In Robin's detail-obsessed world, perfection isn't an option, it's a necessity. I need you to focus, and I need you to start doing things right. These two sticklers instruct classes, offer guidance, and from their high-tech control center, they watch every bad move our handymen make. At the end of our sixth episode, Robin and Greg will help decide who is Canada's worst handyman. Before letting them loose on the plumbing, Greg teaches a comprehensive class. Oh, you're going to be wearing gloves and you're going to be you keep your hands away from your mouth. Replacing a toilet is easier than most people think. The first crucial step is to turn off the water, flush, and then empty out what's left with a sponge. The toilet is held in place by just two bolts on the floor, so the next step is to remove those bolts. Then, just wiggle it free. After that, all you have to do is replace a simple wax seal before popping the new toilet into place. Then reattach the fittings and caulk the floor to finish. And there you have it. My suggestion to you is that as you remove the old toilet, don't destroy what you've taken away. Use that as a guide for the reinstallation. Right? Oh, like work backwards. There's your toilet. That's everything you need to know. It seems straightforward. <laughs> In the first episode, Daryl was named the most improved handyman. Today, he's eager to show his success wasn't a fluke. This thing will flush the toilet. Uh -huh. Daryl begins dismantling his throne, but he hasn't drained the tank. I really paid attention. This is not the way to drain a toilet tank. Okay, water everywhere. Ew, get off. Get off the floor. Well, do it now. <gasps> no, ew. Stop, stop. It's mildly disturbing to spill the tank water all over yourself. Oh, this is not good. There's a lot of water in here still. But the water in the bowl? Well, that's precious cargo. Daryl does the smart thing and bails it out. Merle, on the other hand, needs to be bailed out himself. He hasn't drained the water from his toilet, and he's ripping it out anyway. How's Merle? Oh, Merle's got it all open. Eh? He's, uh, he's going at it. Great guns. It only takes five minutes before our resident speed demon has a disgusting mess on his hands. He pouring water back? Oh, wow! Oh, oh, yuck, yuck, yuck. yuck. Oh, yuck, yuck. Merle is actually sweeping the vile liquid into his open sewer pipe. Where's the hack talk? The nuts and bolts holding Barry's old toilet down have fused together and can't be dismantled. This is a common problem with old hardware. Barry could hacksaw the bolts off, but he has a quicker solution. Where's my chainsaw? Barry's not kidding. To free the toilet, he smashes it. All right. <laughs> In Keith's bathroom, he can't figure out how to turn the water off. Kicking the hot water feed to the sink doesn't help. Do you want me to help you? Yes. When Keith tries to disconnect his toilet bolts, he can't remember the most basic rules of screwing. Right is tight and left is loose. Right is tight and left is off. Left is on, right is loose. Our expert Greg comes to help, but Keith ignores his advice. He wants to take his entire oozing toilet out in one piece. Like this one here. Why are you working on them now when you still have It doesn't have matter if I take this off now or in a hundred years. Can't, I can't get this one screw off. Why are you fighting the guy? Okay, I need the wrench. Jeannie's off to a bad start. I don't know how much water's coming out, guys. If I may flood this whole building. But Lawrence knows that as the only female contender for Canada's worst handyman, Jeannie will soldier on. Listen, help! I feel as though I'm in here with a bunch of guys and that I, I can do just as good a work as they can. It's going to take my time and this will work out. You. Daryl's toilet comes out perfectly. Oh, that's looking nasty. The wax ring is a foul-looking object after 30 years of service, but new, it's a kissable marvel of science. Without this $3 part, which creates a seal between the flange and the bowl, toilets would be a leaky mess. Installing it properly is crucial. Daryl and Sarah are doing really, really well. Yeah, I think I'll... I think they're, yeah. I think they're in the lead. Daryl's even ahead of Merle, who's usually finished first. 
Now, why would anybody want to be a plumber? When you get to this stage of the project, it's wise to plug the sewer pipe with a rag. This prevents noxious fumes from poisoning you, and it stops any sewage-eating critters from trying to make a run for it. Get a few cockroach issues? Yeah, I got live animals coming out here. Some kind of poop bug. In renovation, you never know what you're going to encounter when, when you get into a wall or get the toilet off. Toilets are the greatest invention in the world when they work properly. Why don't you get off your ass and go do it? I'm trying to fix this thing here. One third of all Canadian home renovation takes place in the bathroom. So, we're having Canada's worst handyman take out a toilet and put in a new one. Oh, that's looking nasty. Oh, that's really gross. I'm coming off unless I hit it with a In hand. Barry's room, he's got the old toilet off and the wax seal removed from the flange. Now, he's trying to pry the flange apart. He should be putting the new wax seal on it instead. I was told this piece would just slip out. Barry was told right. no such thing. So, but this is what will be in the floor. This is just a flange. This toilet will slide over those. In this building, the toilet flanges are welded in place. Breaking one would cost hundreds of dollars in repairs. If you bust that now, you're really So don't, don't bust that, because that's all one piece. Keith is making no progress whatsoever because of a complete lack of focus. I'm not opening my eyes because it's disgusting. You're not even touching the right screw. I am, so... Okay, you know what? I'm fine. I'm not helping you anymore. David. I'm not helping you. Down the hall, Daryl has his toilet installed and the tank mounted, but Sarah remains unsatisfied and starts turning the screws on her husband. Okay, listen to me for one second. Because it's spinning in here. Can I have the screwdriver? I've actually never changed a toilet, so I don't really know anything about this, but... I just have a little more common sense than Daryl. Good manners have gone down the drain in Merle's room, too. I paid attention in class, okay? Hey, don't hey, me hey, up. Hey, 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 hey. I think Merle is, is being pushed, and he's, he's feeling taxed, yeah, and he's, he's yeah, starting to definitely. lash out. Merle has his toilet installed, but to secure it down, he needs two washers he's managed to misplace. I need some washers. Well, then why don't we ask for some? Well, why don't you get off your ass and go do it? Okay. I'm trying to fix this thing here. In Keith's room, the toilet is now held down by just one rusty bolt. Okay, I got it. Oh, he's going to get it all right. This is not easy. Eventually, Keith gets his new toilet in place, but now he's having difficulties reattaching the water line. There you go. You want some help? Yes. Greg rescues the hapless plumber, but Keith still won't believe our expert is right. He this is number like eight times when he has been incorrect or passed on. But you haven't been incorrect. You've been right the whole time. <laughs> yeah, he's got his knickers in a twist over me. Yeah. No doubt about it. He's accusing you of misleading him oh, all over oh, the place. Oh, yes. Blame, blame, blame. Yes. Okay, how's it look? Done? Yeah, yeah. For a toilet to be installed properly, it must flush and have no leaks or wobbles. <laughs> You're crazy. Merle is the first to pass. Ah! Keith's toilet is wobbly and it doesn't flush properly. I'd go somewhere else. That was not, not, not a good thing for me. Barry so. flushes, but it's not bolted down right. You don't see any water leaking anywhere, do you? So, have you ever put in a toilet? Jeannie has, and it's a drooling mess. It's pouring out, Lawrence. But she has learned from this experience. I mean, I never thought that I'd ever take out uh, the toilet or anything like that. So um, now I can, now I could do that. And looky there. And Daryl's toilet is just right. Yes. And uh, you know, feel free to use. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I was, I'm really. Uh, that was my favorite challenge so far. Well, that sucks. After the break, sparks fly. Don't be a. Just get out. What? Don't ever yeah, talk to me like that. Listen, be a cow to somebody else. It's bathroom day here at the Handyman Rehabilitation Center, where the worst home renovators in the country are each trying to completely overhaul an entire apartment in just 12 days. Yes. All right, everybody. Your next challenge, installing vinyl flooring. 
also in the bathroom. The tile floors in the bathrooms are in a shocking state, and vinyl flooring is the obvious way to go. It's cheap and easy to install. There are five steps involved in this job. First, make a full-scale template of the floor using paper and duct tape. Then, trace the template onto the vinyl flooring and cut it out. Next, apply adhesive on the dry, clean floor. Spread out the vinyl. And finish by trimming the edges and caulking the joints. How come we didn't put this on before we put the toilet in? That would not have made more sense. Good question. Good question is right. Let's actually, for the interest's sake, go find out about this. Everybody stay here. Keith's point is correct. When building a bathroom from scratch, the vinyl floor would go in before the toilet. But we're teaching Canada's worst handymen to become better all-round renovators. So Greg won't budge on the lesson. Should they just take the toilet out or should they put it in? Cut around the toilet. Merle predicts this job will take him half an hour. Go get this done and get it over with. When he can't figure out how to unroll his vinyl in the bathroom, Merle decides to do the job right by making a paper template. But after cutting for four whole minutes... To hell with it here. Merle gives up and decides to cut his vinyl by measuring... Four and a half. ...with his feet. This is gonna suck. In the purple room, Daryl has a slight handicap. That didn't work so well. His wife Sarah has a bad back, and it's acting up. I offered to be Daryl's assistant today, but Sarah insists on staying to help her husband. Measuring tape, but I think it's on top of the toilet. Are you want to go check? Please? No. Daryl measures his bathroom floor. Then he tries to draw a scale replica of it on the bottom side of his vinyl flooring. Hey, if you can't do this exercise... Sarah doesn't think it's the right way, so she's refusing to fully cooperate. I'm on the floor, aren't I? Believe me, you need help. Yeah, well, no, Andrew help. Don't piss me off. Meanwhile, Jeannie's not making a template either. Um, this is very wet here. I know, I've just dried it. Yeah, Jeannie's toilet is, is still leaking because it's on a slant. The she tank, the tank is, she didn't tighten the tank down yet, probably. So that's still causing her, well, causing her some grief. Undeterred by the growing puddle, Jeannie measures, cuts some vinyl, and starts spreading it out, hoping to cut the excess off as she goes. But her piece isn't large enough. It's by three inches too short. In his room, Keith is simply baffled as to where he should start. You know what I mean? Like measure it? Yeah. So measure it first. Yes. No, but measure the room first. Y yeah. Barry should do well on this task. I've done this before. But, like Jeannie, he starts by cutting a giant piece of vinyl which he wants to hack into shape as he goes. To do this job, Barry was told by our experts not to lift the toilet. But Barry installed his John so sloppily, he's able to lift up the loose bowl and tuck in the excess material. Sort of. Yeah, you've done this before. I have. Uh, at which point were we going to glue this down? Glue it? I didn't glue my other one. You didn't glue your one at your house? 27 minutes into this challenge, Barry claims to be done. I thought I had it. I, had, I thought I had it perfect. But out of the five necessary steps, he only completed two. Well, that's not too good. Meanwhile, Merle's floor is a scarred mess, full of gaps where putrid bathroom liquids could easily penetrate and linger. To stem the flow of that nauseating liquid, Merle is creating some of his trademark patches. We've seen this kind of slapdash craftsmanship from Merle before. On day one's shingling project, Merle patched 19 gaps like this. Perfect! <laughs> Told him, 30 minutes. Shelly doesn't want to tell Merle he's supposed to glue the floor down, so she stares at the bucket of adhesive until he notices. To make way for the sticky stuff, Merle rips up his flooring and traps it in the tub. Then, Merle dumps his entire bucket of adhesive onto the dirty floor. It's way too much. Merle, how's it going? Oh, You've sort of uh, painted yourself into a corner here. How are you going to reach the vinyl without stepping on the glue? Careful. Oh, gently. I got it. Gently. That wasn't hard. 
<laughs> Doing good handiwork makes most guys feel macho. Not Merle. This is too girly. In 38 minutes, Merle completes three of the five steps. Vinyl flooring should be laid in one piece with no seams. But Daryl can't figure out how to fit the floor around the toilet without cutting multiple pieces. It's a big mistake, and Sarah is helping. Well, you know, I am helping you, but just don't be such a ordering me around. Can you go get this? Can you go get that? So it's a plan you're going to lay this in two pieces? Yeah, this is almost like half the bathroom, and then it's just a square area. Right. So this would be nice and clean, and then the cutting part around the toilet would be the next piece we'll put down. All Daryl's doing is compounding his problem. He still hasn't begun to cut around the toilet, and now he's got this huge edge to deal with as well. But this whole seam that's going to happen in Daryl's apartment. It's a big seam in the middle of the floor now. He's trying to fit it around the toilet now, the second piece. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To go around the toilet, our expert Greg cut out the shape of the base, then he slit the vinyl diagonally, allowing it to flex and fit around the bowl. That diagonal seam ends up hidden discreetly in the back. Daryl can't solve the puzzle, so he cuts several smaller pieces to sprinkle around the toilet. Canadians do handiwork themselves to save money. But if you're throwing out as much material as you're using, it's cheaper to hire a professional. What are you doing? Uh, oh, the piece was not cut well enough. None of the pieces are cut well enough, and Daryl finally knows it. So you've already glued that down, so you made it difficult for yourself. I know, I think I'm done on this challenge. The water in here is just ridiculous. In her bathroom, Jeannie is drowning in a pool of denial. Her toilet's still leaking water onto the floor, but she's pushing on regardless. We can't get the loo to stop leaking. Uh -huh. So I can't get a dry floor. Ah. But you're just going to try and stick it down anyways? I am. It's a ludicrous mistake that will trap a layer of water underneath the vinyl flooring, making the adhesive useless. Because it started out wrong and it ended up hopeless. We gave Canada's worst handyman one hour to perform this task. When time expires, Jeannie has completed two of the five fundamental steps. Which is great compared to Daryl. He's completed none of the steps. And Keith says he's done. Okay, there, there we did it. Like, it's okay. No, 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 no. But his job is a flushable offense. <laughs> Keith has accomplished three of the steps, all very badly. Do you think it would help you to go look at some of the other bathrooms and see how the floor has been laid out in there? Any kind of excursion is beneficial. Let's go on an excursion. As we make the rounds, so does everyone else. People file from one room to another, all passing judgment on the work they see. For Daryl, it's too much to deal with. He wants to be alone with his wife and patchy vinyl floor. Daryl's not going like this. Daryl doesn't want Canada's worst handyman to see his hatchet job. Should I boot him out or what should happen? He's just really stressed because it didn't go well. So he has to make a choice. Just hang back, hang back, everybody. Be social or protect his ego. Just chill out. Everybody wants to get in here and gawk. Just hang on one sec. No, let everyone come in. Let everyone come in? Daryl wants them in. Holy He's missing a big patch. But Sarah wants them out. He's in a really bad mood. This is a really bad time. I told all of you that before you're, when you're coming in. But everyone comes in anyway. Now I'm going to have to deal with him well, later. Be a cow to somebody else. Don't be a Just get out. What? Just go then. Don't ever call me a that's one thing. You know what? Watch your mouth. You know what? Yeah. Whatever. Stay away from me. Don't ever yeah, talk to me like that listen. in front of my face. Oh, no. Don't be so rude. Hey, that's an old oh. school. That's like, how many times did they ask, can we come in, can we come in? No, you said, it, you so said no. Then, then you say, like, I don't even know, Daryl, what you want now. Okay? Because now everybody's pissed off. I'm pissed off. Like, what is going on? I called her a cow. That's it. I didn't call her a 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 stupid nothing. Should we just go and leave you be? Sure. Fine, I, I think he needs some along. Sorry, Daryl. Vinyl flooring. It's a product that can cause suffocating feelings, extreme loneliness, and violent outbursts. Please, use with caution.
Push this over. Push this over. Push this piece of flooring over. There's to the bad monster. blood in the handyman rehabilitation center, and Daryl is right in the middle of it. After our last challenge, Daryl's wife Sarah got into a fight with Merle's wife Shelly. You know what? Yeah. Whatever. Since the fight, Daryl has completely avoided the other bad handyman, and he'd like to keep it that way. But in our next challenge, Daryl will be foreman of the yard work team, which means he'll be in charge of all the people he'd rather avoid. Our on-call psychologist, Dr. Julie Hill, has arrived to help Daryl with his dilemma. So tell me how it's going. The last time Dr. Julie met with Daryl, he predicted his own downfall. I'm going to fail. I can't do any of this stuff. Daryl gets some of that defeatist attitude from his wife, Sarah, who belittles him at every opportunity. What thing at a time? The stress from this badgering creates bad handiwork. What are you doing? But it's hard to have sympathy for Daryl. He's not a victim of this relationship. He's an active participant. Okay, that looks really missing a lot of spots. Why do you keep wearing that shirt? No, I don't want to change. We're okay. When the yard work challenge begins, all of Canada's worst handymen gather with their nominators. But one person is conspicuously absent. Sarah has retired to the hotel to rest her bad back. That leaves Daryl all alone to call the shots on this team project. As leader, Daryl's got a very tough job ahead because his work crew have almost no respect for him and some are even plotting against him. I am very worried about pissing them off, especially if the task is something I have no idea on. I'll be asking a lot of very important questions that you ask foreman. He's the leader, so whatever he says, we'll do. Well, I will anyway. As a matter of fact, I'll be asking what to do all the time. He's the boss man, so if we do it wrong, it's his idea, not mine. <laughs> Your next challenge is yard work, and you're going to lay some interlocking brick today. To lay interlocking brick, dig a flat trench at least twice as deep as the brick you're using. On the bottom, pour a layer of limestone for drainage, level that, and lay the bricks flush with the surface of the ground, being sure to leave a space between each brick to fill with sand. Staggering the bricks is very important. If they all get installed in straight rows, they will shift and separate during the annual freeze. If they are installed in an offset pattern, they will be truly interlocked and therefore much stronger. Just like he promised, Barry starts asking questions like an annoying three-year-old. What do we do? What do we do? We make it, the door's right here, so we'll just make a nice path. And on the side here, why don't we put a little flower bed? Oh, really? And if we have time, maybe we'll put in our little pit. Like just, a barbecue pit. The barbecue pit, pit like just off roast. the side. And has anyone picked up a measuring tape here? Ah. Has anyone measured the blocks before they've dug the hole? To create the barbecue pit, Keith wants the edger he sees hanging up behind the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> barbecue pit? I think that's what I heard, a barbecue pit. We can't let that man have fire. I'm wondering if we're straight as well. We're not very straight here. Jeannie's chatter straight? and Barry's questions straight. could make Daryl explode. Right, Daryl, how far out are we going? Right about there? So I'm just, I just have a question. In the confusion, Daryl loses control and his work team barely skims the surface of the ground. This team is fracturing, but Jeannie wants the spotlight. I hope everybody realizes that I'm digging, I'm raking, and I'm now going to find the spirit level. Have you got a spirit level? Jeannie has annoyed Daryl an awful lot in the past three days. Jeannie, she just talked the whole time. I couldn't even hear half of it. So tell her to shut up. Jeannie just goes on and on and on. I just want to grab that scraggly pile of hair and just boom, boom, boom. As foreman, Daryl finally has the authority to do what he wants, so he sends Jeannie away. Jeannie, Jeannie, why don't you get up and help Keith dig that hole? They put the two biggest misfits together away from the rest of the gang. You two play by yourselves over there. I don't understand why they're doing that over there, Daryl. So, well, that's to keep them out of the way from us, really. Oh, it's keep them out of the way. And you've got enough materials to do this job? I just really guessed I did. I guess we might fall short. So far, the team has dug a trench that's too shallow, they've spread out way too little limestone, and because they never did use a level, the bricks are going in all lumpy. Does anyone think, oh, Barry's got the level out now. Barry, ah, here comes the level. Too little, Look at that. too late. <laughs> What's this for? 
I think we're past the point of using this. Oh, okay, past the point. That's all I wanted to know. Canada's worst handymen have committed the worst crime there is in the world of interlocking brick. They haven't interlocked them. As a permanent structure, this grid is a catastrophe, and Jeannie wants all the credit. I've figured this whole thing out. You figured this whole thing out? I did it. No, without me, they would have... They would have... Jeannie, failed. Come on. But Keith is nice, he's helping. Except he gets carried away with his roots. Merle is noticing the bricks are uneven and wobbly. His remedy is as bad as the problem. Focus on your task. Focus on your task, Jeannie. With time running out, the bricks receive their dusting of sand, Daryl's flower bed is built, his fire pit is finished by Merle, and a few bags of soil get dumped around the pathway like a dirty moat. We kind of have the, the wave effect. It's kinda beautiful. Goes like that. It has a pattern it's to gorgeous. it. It's gorgeous. To celebrate, Canada's worst handymen spark up an illegal fire. As the experts approach, our nominees fall in line, ready to defend the work they are so proud of. When you, when you start with something incorrectly, you, just, you build mistake on top of mistake in order to compensate for what you did poorly the first time. Greg, maybe you can speak. What do you see? I see something that's just going to be a mess the first rain. Anything positive, by the way, the last little question? <sighs> Sorry, guys. I, I mean, looking I at the really, overall process. I was really process, hoping for something better than this. I, I'm not really talking was. about the finished um, project, it's, product. It's, I'm talking about the overall. Wobbly, wiggly. Are you listening? Uh, Actually, now I'm only interested in your guys' animosity. You guys got a wall. I have no animosity at all. He's the expert, and I'm asking him questions. My job here as, a, as the building expert is to critique the building. Right. It's not all the gushy feelings between you. It's the building. You don't and have what gushy feelings. What I see feelings. here is, is amateurish, uh, unplanned, uh, something quite quite sad really all right well i think i'm very proud of this canada's worst handyman started this challenge eager to watch daryl fail but while making their walkway they became more interlocked than their bricks now they're leaving as a unified team well fairly unified where'd everybody go when we come back keith has it out for robin this is how Robin gets around. This is her vehicle. <laughs> River Monsters. Tomorrow, only on Discovery Channel. Canada's worst handymen have gone to the bathroom. So far, they've each replaced a toilet and laid a vinyl floor. Next job on their list, tiling the bathroom. Not the whole thing, just right here. We call it the Backsplash Challenge. And for Daryl, it should be a slam dunk. Tiles. Well, you should be okay at that by now. Seven months ago, when Sarah called to tell us how bad a handyman her husband is, we had to see for ourselves. So we paid them a visit on a day when Daryl was tiling their kitchen backsplash. I've never done this before, but I know more than you. On that day, things didn't go so well. But Daryl did get to spend some quality time handling the materials. What'd I tell ya? I think I hit it too hard that time, so I'm gonna try one more time. Yeah, that was better. Daryl now knows. To tile a backsplash, you start by spreading out a skim coat of tiling adhesive. Then you stroke that with a notched trowel to create ridges. Then you just stick on the tiles using these small plastic spacers to create uniform gaps which will be filled with grout later on. When he completes the third row, Daryl is left with a wide space between his tiles and his medicine cabinet. I have nothing to cut tiles. And from experience we know... Yeah, they won't break, so I guess we got three is what we got. Daryl does the right thing. He tidies up the edges and declares himself finished in less than 15 minutes. We'll just retire early on this one. It's a perfect job. As usual, Merle is more interested in getting this job done than he is in getting this job done right. Quit pissing around and get at it. We offered Merle tiling adhesive, but he'd rather use this industrial glue. Put the sticky stuff, put the tile, and go have a smoke. <laughs> this fast-drying glue won't provide a solid, stable backing. 
And in his rush, Merle's not using spacers either. No one's measured out how the tiles are going to fit, and he's already no, no, zigzagged yeah, he's already, up the wall. It's once again, once again, they're just slapping stuff on and down without a plan. That's right. In Keith's room, he gets going without reading the instructions and without putting any adhesive on the wall. Buttering the tiles like this means they have no chance of being stuck on evenly. But being even isn't one of Keith's priorities. Oh, God. You got some sort of pattern or design going on here? Yep. Or Lately, Keith has been clashing with our design yeah, expert, Robin. Spaces here. You haven't measured anything. Mm-hmm. And a tile, another four-inch tile isn't going to fit between yeah, these two. Trouble started brewing between Robin and Keith during show one when she passed harsh judgment on his ill-conceived mural. I think, I think if I walked in and saw this, I would probably um, curl, curl up in the fetal position and have myself a little cry. Oh. But instead of silencing our expert by doing better handiwork, Keith has spent the last day personally insulting Robin. One head, two haircuts, honey. Like, uh, make a decision. Uh, 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 Her jeans were too tight. Yeah. She's superficial. This is how Robin gets around. This is her vehicle. (laughs) Jeannie didn't read the instructions on the container of tiling adhesive. Now she's making a serious mess. Feel like it's going all right? No, I feel it's going terrible. And I should have looked at a manual because for sure I was going to learn how to do this. Do this thing. It doesn't tell you on there how to do it. Using flat side of trowel, apply skim coat of adhesive. Apply additional adhesive with notched side of trowel at 45 degree angle, combing in one direction. It doesn't tell you how to do it? Not really. Does it? Yeah, it does. In Barry's room, he's almost getting it right, but he's only using his putty knife to apply the bonding agent. Without giving the adhesive a stroke with his notched trowel, Barry's tiles will go on sort of bumpy. Jeannie wants half a tile to complete her fiasco. And how do you propose to cut them? With my tin snips. I don't think the cutting the ceramic tile with the tin snips is is really the right idea there, Jeannie. Have you ever done that? Uh, no, because it's not to be done. No, right. Right. Someone should tell that to Merle. He's trying to snap this tile cleanly in half. How do you cut these straight? Plan A doesn't work. Neither does plan B. Or plan C. No. Plan D. Plan E. And finally, the F plan. Barry's moved on to the F plan as well. There. Keith uses gravity to break his tiles. It's physics. Keith, Merle, and Barry are all breaking tiles so they can be turned into mosaic fillings for the large gaps in their backsplashes. The bad handymen know this craftsmanship will surely upset the experts. If you're going to be a maverick, if you're going to be a trailblazer, you have to expect to be unpopular sometimes. Keith's mosaic is unpopular with Robin. She's not against the idea, it's the execution that has her horrified. The function of a backsplash mm-hmm. is to protect the wall, yes. to protect the paint protect from the what's actually happening from ugliness in the sink, correct? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Things are falling here. Merle wants to apply pressure to his tiles while they dry, so he's got a drawer, a broom, a piece of particle board, and a plan. Job done. Let's go. Which of Canada's worst handymen have made a backsplash our experts deem good enough to grout? After 30 minutes, Jeannie's still not done. Fail. Keith's mosaic has gaps six centimeters wide. Fail. Merle's tight pattern has no room for grout. Fail. And Barry's isn't perfect, but it's good enough to grout. Pass. The nominees for Canada's Worst Handyman are just 90 minutes away from final inspection on their bathrooms. With the remaining time, our candidates have been told to grout their backsplashes, paint, and finish up any lingering jobs. First thing we have to do is the grouting. For first-timers, applying grout can be an unnerving experience. To force it into the gaps, you have to smear it all over the tiles using a spongy tool called a float. Then. You remove the excess grout and clean the surface with a wet sponge. Daryl's getting it done more or less correctly. Everyone else? Well, Jeannie and Merle are both using sticks to jab at their grout. Barry's softly petting his with a putty knife. 
and Keith has made grout the consistency of soup. Yeah, that's right. When painting begins, Daryl is getting it all over his still patchy floor, but Merle is determined to be as neat as possible. So he tapes his edges. Then he tapes the towel rack, he wraps the sink, and he binds up the toilet. As a final precaution, Merle cuts a plastic drop cloth and uses it to mummify himself. When the final frenzy of painting and grouting and leak fixing ends, the inspections begin. Robin, thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, thumbs down. Total do-over. As the experts and I go from room to room... The floor is a total redo. ...a pattern emerges. It's the worst thing that I've ever seen. But in Merle's room, things start looking up. So there's hope here. I'm, 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 there is some hope here. Hope. And Barry gets his best assessment yet. I expect more. It's time for the experts and I to decide who is the most improved handyman for this episode and who is the worst. So, bathroom day? even stinkier than I could have imagined. Which task was the worst? Of all of them, my call would be the lino floor. Yeah? Every one of them was pretty much butchered. And why is that? Is that task too hard? It wasn't too hard at all. Genie shortlist for the worst? Mm, yes. Mm. I would have Ross shortlist. Yes. 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 I would have to say so as well. Yes. Toilet leaking. Uh, she glued the linoleum floor down. Wow, there was this much water yeah, on the floor. That's no good. Yeah, and her, her grouting and, and tiling were also on the short list is Keith. Until Keith starts to listen to what the experts have to say and realize that we actually do know what we're talking about, instead of taking personal pot shots when we're telling him things that he doesn't want to hear, he, he's not going to start to go anywhere. Is there any creativity in his creativity? Absolutely well, not. He... His creativity is just an excuse for poor workmanship. Let's figure this out. Who is? The most improved and who is the worst i think the worst handyman just go around might be keith the worst handyman of this episode is either going to be me or genie and now i'm feeling so <laughs> that it's going to be me i'd like it to be genie i haven't seen what she's done i'm just doing it on like a personal level i think i probably will be declared the worst today mm -hmm. Well, we've reached the end of our second episode here at the Handyman Rehabilitation Center, and it's become pretty apparent that what you people need to become better handymen is a serious attitude adjustment, okay? Things in this episode just got way too personal. Keith, when Robin came into your room to talk about your bathroom, you decided that she was the scummiest thing in there. You called her a witch, you called her something that rhymes with that. Alienating the smartest people here is not gonna help you become a better handyman. And Barry, you're getting really confrontational with our head contractor, so I just want somehow in this process for you two to come together and kiss and make up on some level. Daryl, you said that you came here to become a better handyman, not to make friends. But then after that big melee happened, and then after today happened in the yard, I think that you learned, finally, that maybe making friends is going to make you a better handyman. These people have information that you could benefit from. So, you are no longer the most improved, you're just one of the handymen here. And the belt that symbolizes most improved, and also symbolizes head of the yard work team, for this episode is going to go to the person whose toilet flushed the first time they tried, to the only person to put a drop cloth on everything in their bathroom, including their self. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about Merle. Oh! Yeah. 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 <laughs> Now comes the grim part, folks. Somebody was the worst handyman here this week. Without any further ado, that person was. You got it, Keith. Oh! <laughs> Keith, it's time for you to hang your head in shame. Keith isn't being named the worst for his terrible floor or his useless backsplash. He's taking the walk for letting his dislike for Robin adversely affect his handiwork. We believe. Keith will become a better handyman if he confronts his issue with Robin head on. There was a lot of attitude problems in, in this episode in general. And I just want to talk about your relationship with the experts right. specifically. I guess the big thing is how two-faced you are. You are, have been offended by Robin, but when she's around, you're all lovey-dovey and isn't she sweet. When Which, she's around? Yeah, when she's around, you don't have anything negative to say about her. Mm -hmm. When she's not there, you're a catty old bitch about her. Do you really believe that, or is that just comedy for you? Is that just a bit of fun, a bit of sport? 
Because if it is, I think you should apologize to her. And if you do really mean it, I think you should actually say it to her face. Okay. Okay, well then Robin, come out. Oh! <laughs> you were right there. Mm. <laughs> so take your pick. Oh, okay, my choices again were... Do you want to insult this woman or do you want to apologize to her? Okay, I'll apologize. I'm sorry. You're sorry? Uh, yes, I am sorry. Apology accepted. Thank you. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Handyman. I don't even think I'm doing this correctly now. Shelves fall. Oh my God! Beds topple. <laughs> and confidence crashes.